Let's see then, boys. Let's see. Let's see. Halloween. Let's start. Let's start it off, boys. The reason why I turned on the stream today, cause like they guess we're giving her that was six, so they did like fifteen fucking doublex. Holy bright screen. Halloween. Operation Wolfpack. Personal challenges and other news. Close testing 0 0.11.9. Okay, Halloween. Are they finally doing something new for Halloween, or are they just recycling all the things they've been recycling for, like... I don't know how long. When was the last time they did a new thing for Halloween? I think it was the submarine thing. Right? I think that was the last time they did something. 2018. Yeah, that's when they first introduced submarines. I don't think they've done anything new since then. They just recycled their ship. Is that what they're doing now? Mm. Let's talk about the in this year's Halloween celebration players will enjoy the already familiar Saving Transylvania, Sun and Darkness, Twilight. Okay. Okay, so there's literally nothing new. There's literally they're recycling the same thing again. There it on the green screen? No, I think you're looking at you're looking at this shit. I think you thought this was dirt. Thank you, Obnoxious. Thank you for the 20. So this is just recycle. They've been doing a lot of recycle content lately. Operation Wolfpack. In version 0.11.9, a special operation, Wolfpack, will become available in the game. It is inspired by the real events of World War II surrounding the German submarine fleet, fleet's hunt for allied convoys. Players will fight at the helm of tier 6 and 8 submarines. There will be 7 players in a team. The objective is to break through the escort screen group and destroy the transports before they reach their destination. For the first two weeks, the Wolfpack will only be available for divisions. Then it will become available as, as operation of the week. Okay, this makes me so sad. Because imagine how goddamn amazing this game mode could be. Imagine how cool this would be with your friends like trying to get past this screening pack and trying to hunt down this convoy. Imagine how cool of a concept this would be if submarine gameplay in World of Warships wasn't such a goddamn atrocity. Like, I'd be blasting Greyhound on full screen on my second monitor while doing this shit and just enjoying myself, like having a great time. This could be so good if submarine gameplay wasn't such a goddamn tragedy in this game. It is so horrendously arcadey and awful that any sort of tactical, strategical anything, it just goes out the window because the gameplay is too simplified. And it makes me so sad because if they've just built the subs ground up for operations and PvE, they could have they wouldn't have had to make them this arcadey wonky race car that we have in the game right now. If they just from the get-go built subs for the for the for non-PvP sequences or for special game modes, submarines could be so much cooler, but because they tried to squeeze it into the meta with all the other ships, we have this tragic race car. That they're now trying to put into this game mode and you know it's gonna like it's not gonna be nearly as interesting because fundamentally submarine gameplay is tragic in world warships it's it's so dumb it's so makes me really sad what would stop you to just right dive right to the transports and shotgun them i don't know like that's the problem it's it, it just it's makes me sad because no, no matter how cool they make this game mode, and no matter how much effort they put into it, the fundamental issue is that submarine gameplay is, is a tragedy right now. And that's it. Personal challenges. We've updated the interface as well as diversified the mission conditions. Okay. Interesting. Submarine changes. The visual effect of pink traveling through water has been re-implemented. It did its job well of drawing the attention of both the target, the player, and their allies to the attacking submarine. Combined with the effect of the ping launch appearing on the surface of the water near its surface, it will help to locate the submarine more accurately. I mean, this is good. This is good. This is a good change. 
I mean, more ways of... I'm not sure how good it will be at actually pinpointing them. I mean, in general, I don't really know the... Maybe the... This is already was already like a good visual indicator. But I guess this helps. You have two, two visual indicators? Sure. Why not? Honestly, anything that screws with subs, thumbs up, they're so poorly implemented in the game right now. Updated the icon representing homing torpedoes. Now it's more distinct. Okay. Yeah, she's sick as well, as you can probably, <laughs> probably hear. Mm. On the surface near its source, yeah. What about subs shotgunning you? Some counterplay? No. There's still no counterplay for that. New ribbons for death charges were added. They will more clearly show the effectiveness of dropping death charges on the submarines. Hit ribbon is issued when a submarine receives full damage. Splash damage ribbon is issued when a submarine receives... See, this doesn't change the fact that they just tank. The issue was... Wargaming were getting tired of people posting clips of dropping like 30 death charges on a sub and not killing it. So now, they're, now they want to like show you that, oh, you weren't hitting it perfectly, you were hitting it on the side. And it's, it's tragic in the sense that, I mean, it still doesn't do nearly enough damage, even if you get pinpoint hits, and uh, it still doesn't change that they're absurdly tanky and it doesn't actually improve this counterplay in any way. Mm, truly, thank you. Uh, I mean, look, I posted this on Twitter, like, as long as this is a feature in, in this game, submarines are a tragedy. Uh, this clip, I've shown it to you guys before, but I think this clip is so perfect, because this, this is literally a, a Des Moines in his own spawn. He's got last known location up, and we can't actually see that there would be a sub anywhere. We, we can't see that they were the sub. This might have been a sub, but we don't know how long ago it was. I'm not sure. I actually think that was like a... That's a cruiser, actually. That's a cruiser. So the sub has been entirely undetected the entire game. Uh, let me... I can... Uh, let's see. Let's get rid of chat background so you guys can see it. But the, on the minimap, there's no indication that the sub is anywhere. So this guy has no idea that sub could be anywhere on the map. He's literally in their spawn. His team is winning. There's no indication he's plane detected. He's running hydro and radar, which for a DM basically means you shit on destroyers. He starts shooting down the planes. And this is the best part. He gets spotted, so at this point it's probably one of the DDs. He's probably pushing up to radar or whatever. And this is the best part. He gets proxy spotted. You see that? A minimap, a submarine pops up. His proxy spotted, the submarine is right on top of him. It wasn't actually this guy, it wasn't this guy. It was completely undetected. There was never any indication, never any warning. A sub just pops up on his forehead without any warning, any indication. And he, he reacts instantly. He instantly turns around, instantly angles towards him. And while his turrets are traversing, he instantly drops diff charges right on top of him. Like literally a perfect drop. He gets... Instantly shotgun to death, zero counterplay. He had no idea who was there, there was no warning, there was no indication, there was nothing that could have in any way helped him. And the best part is, he's done 67k damage, he drops a point blank perfect death charge on top of this guy. And, well, you probably saw that, but the damage goes up to 69. So he did 2000 damage to this sub that had how much health? How much health did this sub have? Oh, Twitter, please. Twitter, please. So, but this this clip here is like my favorite example of like how goddamn tragic. Oh, well, it went to shit now. Interesting. Oh yeah, he's he's full HP actually. The sub is full HP. So he's got what eighteen thousand health, nineteen thousand health. So the death charge did two K to his nineteen K. That's about ten percent. A bit more than 10% of his damage, and he got shotgun to death in return. So, like, as long as that is the implementation of submarines, as long as that is a thing where a, a, a Des Moines, basically a DD killer, a DD hard counter, 
um, is running Hydro in the radar. Neither consumable works against subs, by the way. If they go underwater, you can't radar them. If they go underwater, you can't hydro them until you're like 2k away. So it wouldn't actually have helped him there at all. So none of his consumables work against him. His instant reactions doesn't help him in any way. He had no map warning whatsoever. He was literally sailing in his spawn and he got instantly killed with zero counterplay. And as long as that is how submarines work in World of Warships, obviously the player base is gonna fucking hate them. Like, but they're gonna fucking hate them. Because how is any how how was that any fun for the DM? The, like the only one who had any fun in that game, in that example, was was the subs. Why doesn't Hydra work against subs? <laughs> because war gaming. <laughs> I mean, because war gaming. The the technology designed to counter subs in World of Warships doesn't work against subs. It's why don't carriers burn? Why don't carriers detonate? The two greatest causes of carrier sinking, like in the midway battle, three out of five carriers uh, exploded, detonated. But in World of Warships, they don't detonate. I mean, it's why doesn't the AA work? Speaking of our favorite, favorite cuddled class, auto ASW for aircraft carriers. <laughs> oh no. All tier 6 aircraft carriers will receive death charge airstrike that will work automatically. God forbid they would have to actually use these things. No, no, no. And this is, this is carrier gameplay. That's what we want, baby. Press that X button to insta-kill the enemy team. That's what we want. Truly, peak design. Uh, it won't serve as a tool for attacking submarines. Okay but will grant aircraft carriers a means to defend themselves against submarines that will work even when the player is in control of squadrons. This is kind of like, was it Seraphis, the wargaming dude, who said that Dalarna's 300k HEDPM uh, won't work as an offensive tool, but to defend yourself against enemy destroyers? That's kind of what I'm thinking of. That's kind of what I'm thinking of. Like, this is the same kind of scenario, like, oh, uh, it's not an offensive tool, it just sinks them if they're spotted. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? It will repel enemy deities. Mm, surely. The airstrike will be triggered if a submarine is detected within the air A strikes airstrikes range, or if signs of its presence are present, such as oil slicks on the water or the sonar ping effect. So basically, this thing automatically scans everything within that airstrikes range without needing any player input and the second any presence is spotted like even a s oil flick that a normal player probably would struggle to spot like somewhere behind an island or something I mean it doesn't matter this will instantly scan and spot it and will instantly launch an airstrike considered with probably perfect lead because it's going to be AI lead that's going to be like perfect the submarine will have an opportunity to evade the attack if evasive maneuvers are taken at the right time Submarine will have the opportunity to evade the attack if evasive maneuvers are taken at the right time. I love that there's like, you have the opportunity if, and what the CV needs to do is, well, he doesn't even, probably won't even notice. He literally just sails around, he doesn't even notice. Meanwhile, submarine is forced to just dodge. X. Truly, peak design. Peak design. We're gonna have situations where an, where an AFK CV will accidentally kill a submarine. Th that's gonna happen, like literally. He's, there's gonna be an AFK CV and a sub is gonna be spotted somewhere and it's gonna send out the squad and instantly kill it. Like, this is... <laughs> Interesting. A number of unique commander talents, skills and upgrades have been updated to bring them to balance as well as increase their versatility. Nikolai Kuznetsov. This is interesting actually. Kuznetsov is getting nerfed. I actually want to see something. Do they mention that they might nerf these commanders? I'm actually curious. Where's commanders here? Let's see. We bought 
Plus něco? No? There's no mention that this thing might be nerfed. There's literally no indication that they might nerf him. And they're doing a significant nerf on him. That's kind of sus. Thank you, Skarhard. And thank you, Captain Bacon Strips. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, Kuznetsov is absolutely hilariously overpowered and uh, easily the best captain in the game and should be nerfed. But uh, what I'm questioning is nerfing it now after what? How long has Kuznetsov been in the game? Like two years or something? And now they decide, oh, without any real warning or like they didn't even give any heads up. They actually didn't give any heads up. That's also kind of sus because a lot of people have just probably gone out and bought him. And now they're finding out, oh, by the way, his special gimmick, cutting it in half. Isn't this a heads up? I mean, is this though? Isn't this like the upcoming patch? What is it? This is 11.9, right? This is all for 11.9, isn't it? It's all for 11.9. Yeah, it's all for 11.9. Two patches away. We're at what, 11.7 now? Yeah, we're at 11.7 now. And so it's like one and a half month away, roughly. I mean, it's still gonna be great, don't get me wrong, it's still gonna be a great captain, but uh, it's interesting that normally they, they have strictly adhered to um, giving you a heads up or a warning on something you buy that, by the way, we might nerf this later. Like, they don't touch premiums that don't have, the, have that message, uh, but then if the premium has the message, they've been quite free in nerfing and changing it. It's a nerf, but don't, not in all cases. No, it is a nerf. I, I've seen some people, oh, but you heal more, but the difference is shit. Like, um, with the old, look, the old heal was 30 times 0.25%. Which is 7.5, or divided by two, it's 3.75% health. And now you you heal a massive 5.25. So what you're getting is 1.5% extra healing during the same time period. 1.5%. And in return, in total, what you're losing out is uh, what 2%? 2.25. It it is most certainly a healing nerf, quite significant one as well. But yeah, uh, more importantly though, the duration of bonuses after the activation of the talent. This is big. For those who aren't aware, Kuznetsov's gives you damage con. If Kuznetsov procs, you can't be set on fire, you can't flood, your, your modules can't break. Basically, you have a 30 second super DCP active for 30 seconds. This being cut in half to 15 seconds is very brutal. Very brutal. And um, obviously the healing potential also goes down quite significantly. So that's a, also the dispersion thing also drops. So yes, it's a nerf. Don't get me wrong. Still probably the best perk in the game. Still probably the best cap. Well, it's pretty, f especially for Soviet ships, it's pretty incredible. Kuznetsov is still going to be absolute top tier, but most certainly a significant nerf. Because there are ships that needed to be done years ago, yes. Needed to be done long ago. The fact that they're doing it now is interesting. Um, but, like, especially on ships like Kremlin, for example, where fires deal a fair bit of damage, and you're so armored you don't eat too much other damage, or like Petro and shit like that, uh, the 30 second fire immunity was a big deal. So, going down to 15 is a big deal. So, but it's a nerf, but yes, it should have happened, but. Timing is weird, lack of warning is weird. Okay, they buff, made it so it buffs CVs as well. Fantastic. Isoroku made it so it buffs CVs as well. Okay. Okay, just that's just a bug fix. Lightning fast. Ner uh, nerfed. Abonio buffs CVs as well. Fire Fury added bonus to increase the chance to cause flooding by a torpedo by 10%. Okay, small buff. 
it, you heal for more for 15 seconds. It's a semi nerf. No, it's a fucking nerf. The healing part is literally probably the least important part of this buff. Honestly. The DCP on demand and the 30 second DC damage immunity. That was the big thing. The healing is whatever. It's very small. And now it's nerfed. It's absolutely a nerf. It's a flat out big nerf. Because the 30 second meant that if you're something like a Kremlin, you can, if you're being full, you're being uh, pummeled by incoming fire, you can pop your damage con. It has a 38 second cooldown. You get set on fire again. You pop Kuznetsov. You have fire immunity all the time until this is up again. So you get this, you can chain it into basically this more than a minute worth of complete fire immunity in shit like Kremlin. It's superbly strong. Oh, I forgot to turn... I had music on and I was listening to music, but I forgot to turn it on OBS. <laughs> You can chain heals, that too. Okay. Interesting. Submarines. Enlarge propeller shaft. The skill now also increases the submarine speed when surfaced and at... Wait, isn't this the insane buff? Isn't that the really, really strong buff? Isn't that the 18% buff? It's this thing, isn't it? 18% speed... That's an insane buff! That's one of the best perks on, on subs. This is like a must-have perk on subs. It's 18% speed if you're less than 50% dive capacity. And they really made it so it works on surface and periscope as well? Holy shit! All the complaints about subs being too quick and too hard to corner and wargaming is like yeah we made them even faster on the surface lmao this clip from yesterday's stream comes to mind chant this clip from yesterday's stream is is very relevant right now couldn't have said it better myself clipped by floor tech uh tech how, how good they ignore the feedback here in chat. As we always talked about, guys, I know some of you guys don't like subs, but this is the reality. They are here. They are here. You might not like it, but they are here. Thank you, Wargaming. Added a bonus, reduce aircraft time, okay. Aerial torpedo, oh, a lot of CV, but like, oh, it's hybrid buffs, eesh. Battle cruisers, cruisers, battleships, cruisers, EA defense and ASW expert. Added an activated effect. When AA is active, improves the ship's consumables reload time. Didn't we already, this used to be a thing in the past. And people theory crafted it and realized it's absolute dog shit. It's like the, one of the worst perks buffs ever. And now they're re-adding it? Like, you get a 5% buff on your consumable reload when AA is active. And how long is AA really active? Like a couple of seconds, 10 seconds. So the actual effective buff you get here is something like 0.5%, maybe. Battleship's probably same deal. Like, holy tragedy. So, like, if a CV drops you for 20 seconds, you get 10% on those 20 seconds. So you save 2 seconds on your consumable cooldown. Jesus. They really trying to make this like people spec AA? Come on. Aircraft carrier, secondary armament expert. Added a bonus that increases damage of death charge by 10%. Okay. 
This should be when you are plane spotted. When a plane is spotting you. Then it might actually have some value. But even then it would be shit. Honestly. It's still so shit. It's still like tragic. Like, this is the flag. This is a worse flag. This thing, this 5%. Like, this is literally you slot. This is literally you slotting. Wait, where is it? Uh, this flag. 5% reload, consumables. This is this flag, but much worse. Much worse. Added a new upgrade. Air Grips Mod 3. It can mount at 4 slot on ESET on a Cure Sarge. Jesus, can they stop trying to make these things into carriers? Ish. I-56 can now have main battery mod 2 and aiming systems. Good lord. Brawls. 0.11.9 will be featuring 3 brawls in the following formats. 1 versus 1 on tier 6 ships. No ship type restrictions. So subs can be a thing. Wait, subs can be a thing. Wait, oh no. Also, second brawl. 4 vs 4 in tier 6. In this brawl, you will be able to participate with submarines. They're really, really like trying to shove those subs down our throat. Sub submarine gameplay will be forced upon you until morale improves. Check, uh, check out how good they ignore the feedback here in chat. As we always talked about, guys, I know some of you guys don't like subs, but this is the reality. They are here. Man, I literally couldn't have said it better than Wargaming, dude. I, I love that stream, like, we're gonna get into that later, but I loved that fucking stream yesterday. Like, I, I've never seen them speak so much truth, because they got so cornered by the community, and they actually spoke a lot of truth. It was very spicy. An update 0 from the level 9, the ninth rank middle season. Oh, different tiers! Tier 5, Holy Julius Cesar. 6 and... Oh, kamikazes. Kamikazes everywhere. 6 and 7, tier 10 and super ships. Yeah, we're, we're dodging gold this season, champ. I'm just saying, we're guaranteed dodging gold this season. Super carriers in, in ranked. Imagine, 6 versus 6. 6 versus 6 with the USS Sus on the enemy team. Holy shit, that is going to be the biggest suffering I've ever seen. Good lord. Yeah, we're never getting there. Orca, permanent camo for Huron. Hmm. This looks good. This one looks cool. I like it. This one looks really cool. I like this camo. Art department. Celebration for Conquer. Greek Trireme for Velas and King of the Sea Gladiator for Hipper. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Yeah, this one is a bit weird. Ish. Uh, honestly, no, no, not really. Huh, this one is cool. This one I like. This is very like a nod to the old Greek ships. This one is really cool. So, two hits and two misses. 50-50. This one was very cool. This thing is very cool. I like this one. Have to ram with it, right? The Blessing HE is here. HE. Jesus. Hmm. Okay. Well, that was... Deblog number one, and we got a lot of deblogs to go. Let's see. What else is this? Changes to test chips. 
0.11.8 close test. Based on testing results, we are applying changes to Trump, Admiral Ushakov, and Malta. Trump gets a buff. That's good, but once again, why was the base cooldown 8 seconds on the guns? Wait, they're nerfing the bomb airstrike to 60. The thing doesn't have any torps, or smoke, or heal. So besides the anemic DPM, they, this was its only gimmick. And now they're... Oh, it did have torps, yeah, sure, sure. You're right, they were just not that good. But like, this was the whole gimmick, now they're nerfing it. It has three torps per side, yeah, true, true. Kinda doesn't have torps, but... Soviet Super Battleship Admiral Ushakov. Fore and armor belt thickness increased 50 to 60. Aft and armor belt thickness increased 50 to 60. I, I wanna see the guy over at Wargaming who looked at the Ushakov, looked at its armor scheme, and was like, yeah, I mean, sure, but maybe it could be a bit, a bit stronger. Just, 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 just a bit thicker. I mean, it's... I mean, it's, it's okay, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, it's a nice thickness, but maybe a bit more. Just a little bit. <laughs> Combat instructions. Number of salvos required to fill the adjustment fire meter increased from 9 to 12, so one extra broadside. This is a pretty big deal, because uh, I think it had, doesn't it have Kremlin Reload, which is like 33 or something? So, provided you're running Reload mode and shit, we're talking about 30 seconds extra time to get this buff active. This is a pretty big nerf. Aircraft carrier Malta changed the parameters of attack aircraft HE. Decreased rocket dispersion, reduced rocket launch interval. Jesus. Uh, this is a big dispersion buff. But uh, what I don't understand about the Malta is as far as I understood, they still haven't touched the, the, the plane recovery parameters on this thing. Uh, I, I've looked at it and the plane recovery seems completely obscene. Like I think the Audacious has something like an 80 second plane recovery time. And the Malta has a 55 second plane recovery time. So this thing can literally spew out planes non-stop regardless of losing them because it recovers them so goddamn quick. And the fact that they still aren't touching that, it generates like 160 planes in a 20 minute game. Yeah, it's 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 absurd. It's like it's it's completely dented as as a design. It's complete I think the the the, the argument was the planes are weaker than the audacious planes, but looking at the stats, the health difference is something like 80 health, like 80 HP. And in return, it gets like 30% faster plane reload. It's Enterprise at tier 10. Yeah, it seems completely absurd. And the fact that they're not doing anything about it makes me think that, well, they want it that way. They want another ship that just ignores AA. I mean, that's been a very much a gimmick lately. Um, knock him off. Drops outside of AA range, doesn't care about AA. FDR has so much health, it doesn't care about AA. Super ships, their planes are literally consumables. Like, you can shoot down all the jet planes they send out, they won't care, it's literally consumable. They don't give a shit. And now we're getting the Malta, which regenerates planes so fast that it doesn't matter if you shoot them down. They, they keep building upon an already shit design and making it worse, which is... Like, hello? It's, it's baffling. It's, it's, it's baffling. It's, it's just insane, honestly.